Hey, what up, dude? So, I'm gonna be going through, chilling here, doing, working on a uh, new book. And uh, I figure while I'm working on SHSAT stuff, I can also be available to help out you homies if you have any questions uh, regarding the material from the test. So I'm gonna zoom into this bad boy right here. Bang, look at it. This is the SHSAT math section. Cool, so it is 57 questions long. It is 90 minutes. And so I guess the first thing that I'm gonna do today is just show you how many minutes per question you get. Oh, that is right on that thing, okay. Wow, I wonder if my camera is clean. It's giving me like a ghost, ghost thing. Uh, it's all good. Let me get like a rag. Yeah. Wow, that's hyper HD. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that HD. It's too HD, I can't even see it anymore. Okay, so here is, here is the test. And let's figure out how many minutes you get to do each question. So, I guess I do need a light. Let's see if I can adjust the brightness on this bad boy real quick. Oh my god, all these settings are so lame. Cancel. Take me out of here. Alright, cool. So, check it out. Whenever we want to figure out how many minutes per question, notice how I put a fraction symbol when I said per, right? And this is gonna be important when you eventually you do unit conversions and stuff like that. So just like if I were to say miles per hour, right? It's like you put the miles over the hour. So how many minutes do we have and how many questions do we have? We have 90 minutes. And we have to do 57 questions. So what does that equal out to? Um, let me scoot you out of the way for a minute. One minute to... Do, 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 do. Okay, so that'd be 90 divided by 57. And that would go in once. Seven. Oh, I don't want to do the subtraction. Three. It's an eight. Thirty-three. So then we put the decimal here, the decimal here at a zero. We're going to bring down that baddie right here to three thirty. Let me get my computer all set up. Make sure everything's gravy here. Okay, cool. So how many times does fifty-seven go into three thirty? Maybe. Oof, I want to say one, two. Three, four, five, six, maybe six? Question mark. Six times seven is two forty. Um, six times five is thirty. Thirty-four. Dang, too big. So five. Five times seven is five thirty. Five times five twenty-five twenty-eight. Like that. Seven. That's a two. Twelve. That's a four. Four seventy zero. Okay. So then I think this might be the uh, seven right here. So seven times 57, or seven times 57 would be seven times seven, nine, 40. Right now I'm doing how many minutes per question uh, you get for the math section of the SHSAT. This baddie right, wait, where, where's that opening page? Right here. So this is the math section. You'll get uh, 57 questions and you have 90 minutes. So I'm working through that math right now. And I put the minutes over the question. So seven should work out. Seven times seven is nine, 40. Seven times five, 35. That'd be 39. Oof, that might be a little, that might be a little low. So that'll be eight. So that'll be our answer here. 1.58 minutes a question. 
So when you are doing the math section on the SHSAT, and even when you're doing the uh, ELA section, that's about how much time you get per question. Unless my division is wrong, which I admit it may be wrong. Uh, I don't have my calculator with me. Hey, what's up, Chen? What's good, man? So, uh, yeah. So right now I'm going to give you the opportunity to look at this bad boy. And if you have any questions about any of these, if you feel it, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this even better. And uh, if you have any questions about them, I can help you with the math of this section. Uh, let me get this lighting situation legit. Okay, cool. So I'm going to pull up to a page, a page like this, maybe. And uh, tell me if you have any questions about any of these math problems, because this is from an official city guide of an SHSAT. I could probably zoom in a little bit more, but I'm actually going to hold off on that. Can you see it better if I turn these off? Yeah, I think that's good. On the ninth grade SHSAT, that's a good question. So even in this manual, I'll, I'll show you, they, they go over some of the ninth grade stuff. And so we can talk about that. Are you planning on taking the uh, ninth grade SHSAT? Okay, it's table of contents time. Let's see here, yeah? Yeah, it's, uh, what did you get on your eighth grade SHSAT? Did you did you get the did you end up taking it? Claims irregularity. This was at five fourteen. That's solid, man. Not quite enough, but very solid. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend going for that ninth grade SHSAT. Yeah, Brooklyn Tech for sure, for sure. Were you shooting? Were, were you? What are you shooting for now? Are you shooting for sty? I bet. Where is the ninth grade stuff? Scoring. Testing procedures. I think it would be under 19. So I look at this way too much. Here we go. ELA, ELA. And don't they have a ninth grade test or something? I thought they did. I got a ninth grade math add-on. Let's see here. Here's B. Multiple choice. This is form B. And yeah, here we go. So here's here, uh, Chen. Here is your ninth grade mathematics overview, my man. Uh, and so what you'll notice is that it's very similar to the eighth grade version you took, right? But, um, you know, you'll get something like this that's a little bit more difficult. It's like a, um, you really have to know the rules of exponents. Or for this, do, 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 with some parallelogram stuff and graphing. Okay, cool. So we have algebra and graphing they in the eighth grade version they really have shied away from graphing so this is um something that you would kind of have to put some focus on because in the eighth grade version they definitely don't talk about it <laughs> wolf population line of best fit yeah this is the second translation how about the ela section uh i don't think there is that, I don't think there is a large difference 
between the ELA in the eighth grade and in the ninth grade. That's that, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. It's just going to get a lot harder because the stuff that they test on the ELA section in the SHSAT is the same stuff that they test in the SAT. And the SAT is, of course, a lot harder than the SHSAT. And so, you know, there's a lot of room for comma rules and for verb tenses and for clauses to get kind of complicated. And that's what they'll probably do. Whereas math, they have to kind of outline the different concepts here, right? Because we're dealing with volume, which is used to be a SHSAT thing, but it's now, I guess, ninth grade. Uh, we're dealing with some similar shapes here. Pythagorean theorem with variables. Notice that there's a lot more algebra in the ninth grade uh, math section. A lot more like having to understand how algebra works without being given numbers or even solving for the numbers. Cool, and so I guess here are the results. So what I'd ask, Chen, if you're interested in studying right now, my man, is to pick one of these problems. Um, and uh, yeah, let's actually, let's actually do this one right here. We'll talk about exponent rules. These are easy. So do you know how to do this one? H. All right, well, let's see. Damn, that was fast, man. Or I mean, dang, that was fast. Let's see if you are right, my dude. So, oh, whoops, I should have kept that on. So we have P to the 12th times P to the 0th, 0th over P to the negative 4. Another way to write this would be p to the 12th times 1 times p to the positive 4th, and that would be to p to the 16th. H. Good job, Chen. Okay. What about, oof, what about something dirty like this? And remember, there's no calculator usage. No using a calculator, my man. Hold on. I'm holding on, dude. I'm holding on with all my might. I'm like barely uh, holding on. All right. And as Chen is uh, working on this, I guess if people are watching after the fact, uh, keep in mind that I'm going to try to be streaming on Thursdays. That's when it's going to happen. 56. Dude, rock. Solid, Chen. Very, very nice. Hi. What's up, Beers? Yo, yo. Going to Brooklyn Tech. Danielle. What's up, girl? Or dude, just interestingly spelling. I currently go to Tech. Oh, nice. Cool. Congrats, I guess. Talk to me. Oh, my God. I can't believe it either. And I am him. All right. Well, right now, we're looking at... um. I don't know either, man. Maybe you're just like feeling nostalgic, dude. I don't know. If you're just like, ah, oh, remember the days when I SHSAT, that was the most fun ever. And I agree, man. I definitely agree. All right. Do, 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 do. I kind of like, we're doing ninth grade problems. I think I did poorly on the ELA section. Dang. ELA section is tough, man. Uh, and what about you, Beerus? What are you working on right now, my man? We can we can jump to ELA and no big deal. Same, I'm a seventh grader. ELA section. All right, dudes, let's look at the ELA section. Let's talk about this because I remember how excited I was to go to Tech. Then I went to Tech. Yeah, but dude, uh, at least you're at Tech and not like like the school for I don't know. 
I don't know what your other option was. <laughs> I guess whatever. Tech is better than nothing. ELA is hard, bro. And but I'm gonna show you, dude. You can break it down so easily, so so easily. And we're gonna go to these sample problems they have right here. And you keep this in mind too, Chen. If you're struggling with this type of stuff, you this is like totally applicable to you, my man. All right, I'm gonna turn this. I'm taking this year. I'm freaking out. Stop freaking out. How about that? <laughs> Just like relax, dude. You're you have tons of time. You can study. You know. Oh, what's up, Chidi? Uh, yeah, you can study, and we are going to be working on it so that you're going to be so ready when this gets started. Yeah, the difficulty, it ha it's changed. It's a different test now. They don't have logic anymore. So let's talk about this one right here. Hey, what's up? Let's talk about this one right here, bros. So it's a, it says, read this sentence. Since college administrations, oh, dang, the answer was there. Pretend you didn't see it. Since college admissions are highly competitive, many students begin planning for the admissions process while they attend middle school rather than waiting until they enter high school. That's just wrong. I don't know any kid who is like a middle school kid being like, man, gotta get ready for college. It's stupid. One thing at a time. So they're gonna ask what edit should be made to this sentence? Uh, well, look, we don't know. I don't know. Do they need periods? Does it need commas? The first thing you do, bros, check this is go to the answer choices, okay? And notice it says change R to will be. Change begun to began. I'm gonna move this over here. Ah, oh, man, my lights. Change begun to begin. Change attend to had attended. Notice, what is the difference? Or what do all of these uh, answer choices have in common? I think it's D, okay, we're gonna talk about it. All of these answer choices have one thing in common. Dude, Chen, right on the money, dude. Because it is, we're dealing with verb tense, right? So now you just have to look and see what verb tense is the sentence in. Well, let's look at the sentence. Let's look at the verbs here. Are. Is that past, future, future, or present? Ask yourself. Began. Past, future, or present, right? Uh, attend. Okay. Waiting, right? So people seem to be settling on B here. And what is the mistake with began? What's wrong with began? Because this, exactly, Chadi, that's perfect. This whole thing is in the present tense. So begin is present. It sounds weird. Dude, you are right. It sounds weird. But do exactly what Chati's doing, which is, identifying it because if you go by if it sounds weird or feels weird or looks weird you're gonna be right maybe 90% of the time actually probably 80% of the time but they make these tests hard so even though yeah begin sounds better it's because we need to be present tense cool I'm gonna give you another problem like this to see if you can actually you know what let's move on to a different concept here uh, they do the modifiers and then they do the okay so let's do this one right here this one is actually kind of a difficult problem. This is the most recent year, uh, handbook, Nathaniel. They're coming up with, they're coming out a new one in uh, the summer. So just, I'll, I'll have some more content when that bad boy comes out. What is a modifier? A modifier modifies the way we think about something. So if I say uh, you're just a uh, dude, that's just one thing. But if I said that you're a smelly dude, right? That smelly kind of modifies the dude right? Chen thinks it's B. Okay, so Chen, why do you think it's B, my man? And everybody keep working. Oh, dang, because the answer is right there. Oh, dang, Chen, are you cheating, dude? You, or you're not cheating, you're just being, you're just being uh, sneaky. That's nice. I like that. The answer is showing. Thank you, Chadi. Thanks. So, glad somebody's honest. Chen just making me think he's like a master of ELA or something. Although, technically, you're correct, Chen, so good job. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about why it's B, okay? So, look at this sentence. As one of the many museums and landmarks of the Smithsonian Institute. What do you think of veganism? Uh, are you vegan? <laughs> <laughs> because millions of people cannot be one of the million mini exams. Chen, very nice, very nice. How's my sister doing? 
What's up, guys? So exactly it. So it says one of the museums is a landmark for the Smithsonian Institution. What is the nearest noun to that? Millions of people. And that's definitely not what they're trying to describe. It sounds like they're trying to describe this museum thing, not the millions of people. And I doubt millions of people are one of the many museums and landmarks. So that's why this one is the way it is. Let's do the last one from this book, and then I got some other problems for you, homies. Goodbye, Don, y'all. It's been an absolute pleasure. Smash that like button, dude. Sentence two is irrelevant to the passage. That's not what they're testing, Chadi. <laughs> if they were testing that, you might be correct, and you actually are correct, but that's not what they're asking. It's super important that you check what the homies are asking um, so that you answer the right thing. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm saying. Oh, thanks, Daniel. Yeah, thanks, everybody else. Smash that like button, dude. It's the only thing that gives me self-esteem. Yeah, yeah. What do you think is the best specialized high school? Man, I think it's, um, I mean, everybody's going to tell you it's style. So... What I'm gonna tell you is it really, really depends. Yeah, everybody's gonna say sty, but it, it really depends on what you want to do. Because if you wanna go into engineering, if you wanna go into like public leadership, like, so sty is ranked the highest and it's the most exclusive to get into. But for some people, they might wanna end up at Brooklyn Latin or the School of Math Sciences and Engineering at City College because they are really into math. How do you know which high schools are the best? I go by their scores, uh, their SHSAT scores they accept. Because the higher score, I only got 90 on mock test on my first try. You got a 90? Beerus, are you talking about a 90% or are you talking about a 90 out of like 750? <laughs> That's a big difference, man. 90 raw oh well that's solid that's 90 out of uh 114 so that's uh i'm not that smart why, why would you say that you, you're 90 out of 114 so i can give you the percentage on that i could actually work it out right now real quick because there are 114 questions really there's only a hundred and a hundred and you know 97 questions he's doing integral calculus my friend is though yeah, well, just because you're you can do math really well doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only thing that means that you're smart. Say, pet, dude, the G twos are where it's at, man. These are like the they're the they're the Cadillac of pens, bro. So you got ninety out of I'm assuming your P test was one fourteen. Oh, man, I wish I had a calculator in my life. This would be one. Oh, I can't even play that game. So that'd be four. 11 to 40 if you're into science what specialized high school is best uh that's a good question i don't know science there is i remember reading about one that is into science 24 what, what's 24 the answer to this no do you do you know can someone calculate that i guess i have a calculator in my life somewhere it's just i'm on my phone right now no no other thing let's see Let's pull it up. You got 240. PUBG Mobile. <laughs> Dude, I would destroy any of you guys on PUBG Mobile. Like, I I reign supreme there. Uh, yeah, that's like a 78% Beerus. Um, so that's decent, my man. That's decent. You want to be you want to be in the 80s and 90s though, for sure, just so that you can have your pick. Uh, how that would translate, that would be like a divided by three, so that would be a 30, a combined 30, so it'd be 15 and 15. You're pretty close to the cutoffs, Beerus, very close. Uh, I would definitely, definitely keep studying, man, because you don't want to be close. You want to be like, for sure, good to go. Uh, so here, let me throw, let me throw, Chachi, you feel stupid, I did really bad on the test. test. Nah. Nah, like, let me, let me throw a practice problem at you guys and let's see what, how you guys do. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. How about we go to... Yeah, how about we actually go to the actual test here? Okay. Do -do. I'm like looking through the thing right here. Don't say that. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you're what you're doing is you're studying now. You always get low 60s. Well, that just means you need to study. That's all that means. It's just like if the pot isn't hot enough, you got to keep heating it up. And if your score isn't high enough, you just got to keep raising it. And this is how you do it. You do it by studying and putting in hard work on a Thursday. You know what I mean? Flyby missions of Jupiter. Okay, let's talk about this one because you don't need to know grammar as much, but it definitely would be useful. But it's an interesting question. So read these two sentences and then find the best way to combine the sentence to clarify the relationships. Taking your second one on Monday. All right, man. Good luck. Good luck. Beerus thinks it's G. Okay. What about you, Chotty? Are you done? Nathaniel, you got any guesses here, my man? I go to dream and I got, <laughs> I go to dream <laughs> and I got an 82 on my benchmark test and I guessed on most of them. Chotty also thinks it's G. Okay. And Wakanda forever. Congratulations. Wow. I hope so too. Alright, so. Oh, and I also go to Dream. G. Alright, so everybody seems to be sitting on G here. Right? Th dream equals tutor stuff? Oh, dude. No way. And Chen comes in flying with E. Welcome back, Chen. All right, so let's take a look at these answer choices. So we know F is wrong. Can anybody tell me why F is wrong? Like what, what makes this a wrong answer choice? I know, tell me, tell me the truth. Seriously, why is F incorrect? Transition, Chen on point. Yeah, the word although. This comma is actually okay, Beerus. So let me explain why this comma. <clears throat> let me explain why this comma is actually pretty decent. So although there have been flyby missions near Jupiter, this although is a dependent marker because it's although in the front is used incorrectly. Incorrect transition. Exactly. Although it makes it sound like contradiction. Yeah, you guys are nailing on it. That's exactly it. This is not a contradiction. And same thing with this thing down here. This sucks. This but it is not a contradiction. So that is an incorrect way to combine them. Right? So now we're between this E, what to WTF? Let me actually. Now we're between this E and how, how do you know these things? So smart, well, I'm an adult. It's, it's so much easier when you're an adult. Hold on, let me turn on the brightness, brightness on my thing real quick. Yeah, it's like this is so much easier if you're an adult. Okay, so look at, uh, we have between G and E here. Now this is flyby missions near Jupiter. And then which allows scientists to collect data about the planet and its moons. It's more of a memory test. You just have to know the formulas. Yeah, kind of. There's some tricks you can use. Have been happening since 1973. So this inside of the commas here is what's called a non-essential modifier. And what's it modifying? It's modifying the flyby missions near Jupiter. That's pretty solid. Now, let's look at G. Flyby missions near Jupiter allow scientists to collect data about the planets and its moons which have been happening since 1973. So now this is the modifier. It's this which has been happening. What is it modifying? Is it modifying the moons? Have the moons been happening since 1973? Nah. And so that's why the answer is actually E, because this one has a misplaced modifier, which has been happening since 1973, needs to be close to the flyby missions. So that's what's been going on. That's the answer on this bad boy. I know, I know, dude, yeah. So see, you're studying, your brains are getting larger, absolutely larger. Okay, so let's look at this one. Ooh, this is a good one. Number five. What's going on, I'm confused. What's up, Menma? We're just working on stuff, brother. Chan is going with C, okay? What else we got, guys? Let 
Listen to your hearts on this one. Follow your dreams on this one too. We had another C. It's two because it does not specify what, what field. Okay, very cool. Any other guesses? I'm waiting for Beerus. Okay, girls. So let's see here. The girls. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. C because Chen said it. Oh, okay. All right. Beerus using some uh some some deduction to solve to solve this one. Okay, so let's talk about it. What are our vague pronouns here? What is a pronoun? So although you do make a decent point here, Joseph, the girls is actually not not really I mean, I guess it is a pronoun, but it is a pronoun for Eliza and Brianna. So girls goes with Eliza and Brianna, right? And so that's that's good to go. But the girls always seem to do it at the talent show. They take they take turns. Who? Eliza and Brianna. And we know it's not the talent show because it's they and not it. They take turns singing the national anthem before school sporting events. Outside of school, she. Who is this she? Is it Brianna or is it Eliza? Who? We don't know. That's the vague pronoun. It's vague because we don't know who she stands for. You would have to put like Brianna or Eliza in here to so that we know which one it is. Cool. Do you have any questions about that one? Questions, concerns, compliments? Moving on to the next one. Okay. Here we go into sentence structure, dudes. Like a saint in this stream. I don't know, dude. Don't know. I feel like that one was easy. Yeah, you know, it, it, once you get used to seeing these types of questions, then you're much more likely to be on it. So... We already got, oh, note to self, actually read the rest. Yeah, that's pretty good, bro. So we have our first entry into this. Chen thinks it's, what did you think it was, dog? E, after agile. E, okay. E as well, Beerus coming in, coming in hot. And Shati also thinks it's B, or E. So why, what, Wilt is the goat, yeah, dude. So why do you guys think it's E though? Like what's the rule being at play here? What's, why do you need a comma there? Two adjectives must be separated with a comma. Ath Agile and athletic. Nicely done dudes, nicely done. So this is when I'm going to teach you homies how to get this done here. Because you are absolutely right. When you have two adjectives, like let's say you have the uh, short, wet dog, right? You need a comma in there for sure. I'm a, way, I'm a girl, by the way. Yeah, you are. Uh, short, wet dog, you need a comma in there because you have to check the rules. One, can you swap the order of the two adjectives, right? And in this case, you can. Two, you gotta check, can you put and in between? Okay, so you could say, yeah, the short and wet dog. You could also say the wet short dog. But what if I said this? We have two adjectives here, large and ice, and they're both describing the rink. So do we need a comma in between these adjectives, dudes? Do we need a comma between those two adjectives? No, that's correct, Beerus. That's a perfect, Chen, that's exactly it. Same thing, Chadi. Because the rink is ice. Yeah, you couldn't say the ice large rink. You know what I mean? You, you, and you couldn't say the li large and ice rink. So there's no comma that goes in there. So that's a very important distinction to make. Because when you see those two adjectives, sometimes they get the comma. Sometimes they don't get the comma. And it just depends on these two rules right here. All right, chill. Chill, chill, chill. All right, let me find another one. Oh my God, you guys are gonna love this one. We're gonna have to get into commas. Uh, or actually, you know what, let's do this one. Let's do this one first, because you guys have done it. How do you know when to add commas beside adjectives? Bro, 
I could go all day. Common sense. That would have been funnier if you would have said comma sense. Uh, so how do you know where to put commas? Now there's a couple rules about where to put commas. Uh, and I have like a ton of videos about this. Um, let's see. Uh, you can put it in um, between a dependent sentence and an independent sentence. And I'll give you an example of this one. You could say, while I'm shopping, right? This is dependent because it has the while. You're like, while I'm shopping, what? What did you do while you were shopping, right? This while turns this normal independent sentence into a dependent sentence. It's called a dependent marker. So then you also have an independent sentence, I cry, right? That's an independent sentence. And how do you combine these two? You combine them with a comma, just like that. Cool. Okay. Uh, another way you can do it is between an independent and an independent sentence, you have to use the comma fanboy. Okay? So we're going through a couple different ways. Because if you can think your way through this, you can definitely work your way through the test with high accuracy. If you're going with instincts, then that's when you get a little messy. Also, smash that like button if you haven't already. Between independent and independent, you gotta throw a comma fanboy. So let's just say, uh, actually our example will be right here. I sleep Daryl um, uh, laughs, okay. So I sleep Daryl laughs, right? These are two independent sentences, independent, independent. The way we can combine them, you can't just use a comma because that's that's how you do it up here. And that would be a comma splice. You have to throw a comma and then a fanboy. I sleep and Daryl laughs. Jason, that's on point, my dude, for the win for sure. So that's how you do it. You could also say I sleep comma sleep comma but I see all, right? This is also correct, okay? Between an independent and independent, you throw that comma fanboy in there. What are fanboys? Uh, 35, I sleep and Daryl laughs. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. So uh, I would say 35 bonus points to anybody who can say, I sleep while I cry. Okay, that's a very interesting way to put it, Beerus. That's actually correct, right? That's using your dependent modifier. Because if you have a dependent and then an independent, there's no commas. So if I say, I cry while I shopping, there is no comma in there. It's like a very weird exception to the rule. Never put a comma there. Only if the dependent is first, right? And I, I sleep while I cry. Okay. So these fanboys, does anybody know what the fanboys are? While holds it together? Yeah, that is correct. That, that's technically correct. Does anybody know what the fanboys are that we can put? Your P looks like a Q. Your P looks like a Q. What are you talking about, dude? This, this is a beautiful P. Look at that. Four and? Keep going, dude. I'll write them down. We need an N, a B, an O. A Y and an S for these fanboys. Nor, but, or yet. Two more. Oh, it was or? Oh, yeah, you got it. Nice. And does anybody get this last one? Flip through tutoring notes. <laughs> yeah. Dude, hopefully. Hopefully you got a good tutor, man. What is this last one? Since? No. It is a... Since is actually a dependent marker, like while. Uh, all of these fanboys are three letters or less. I don't even have a tutor. I have a crappy A+. Plus. So, nice. Chotty. Joseph. Yes. Bang. So if you put a comma and then any of these, it's the same thing as a period, right? I could just say, I sleep, period. I see all, right?
Exactly, Shadi. That's some good stuff, man. Some good, good, good stuff. Okay, so let's talk about how we can practically apply this, dude. And uh, actually, there's a, two other ways you could use a comma that I want to cover very quickly, uh, just because they're very common on the shisat. Sh Okay, and this last, this the second to the last one is what's called uh, a non-essential modifier. Yeah. Hi, I'm 13 and I, I think I'm funny. Cool, man. Um, so a non-essential modifier is like something that describes something. So it's like, um, I'm gonna use Beerus. Beerus a 13 year old is smart right I'm taking notes good dude I'm gonna I'm here to help you so notice that I put commas right here and right here what is that word bet your crew Man, did you fall asleep on the keyboard, dude? Did you like smash your head onto the keyboard and it pushed enter? So notice that I have commas around this thing. Sometimes when there's commas surrounding it, you're like, well, what? This is Beerus is smart is the full sentence. What's this 13 year old doing here? It kind of breaks up the flow. And the reason is, is that this 13 year old is describing Beerus. But if we took it out of the sentence, it would be fine. Beerus is smart. Bang, we're done. This 13 year old just describes who he is, right? So when commas are around something, that means you can lift it up out of the sentence and it's still really good to go. Uh, actually, there might be a problem like that that we can work on right now. Let's look at this. Let, let look at this. Hold on, one second. Where's the comma question? Where is the comma question? Here's the character from Doug's DBS. From Doug's DBS. Yeah, I don't know what DBS is, man. I don't watch. I don't. Uh, I don't watch YouTube that much, dude. Where are you located? Me? I, I'm in Queens, but right now I'm in California. Enjoying the sunshine, dudes. It's so nice out here. Oh my gosh. Dragon Ball Super. Oh, sick. Yeah, Dragon Ball's sick, dude. I definitely don't watch enough of it. Oh, wow. I live in Queens. Yeah, nice, dude. Nice, chatty. Okay, so where's this comma question I was going to show you, homies? I'm in Queens, cool. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Here's the question, dudes. Da 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 da. And the answer isn't showing this time. A is automat out. Is there shelter? Yeah, dude. Chen, uh, practicing your SAT really will help. So Chadi comes in first. Beerus and Chadi both come in and they say C. So why do you guys say C? Why do we insert a comma after dogs? See, Chen also is on C, but why? But why? Why? Tell me why. Why did you choose C? What is your reasoning? Dogs that clean kennels? <laughs> yeah, dude, Beerus, that's exactly what it is. It's part of a list. Yes, Jason, that's it. Uh, it is showing another example. Yeah, exactly. You guys are, uh, are, 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 are flying in on this. Chen, listing things. Exactly. Um, or, as Beerus suggested, these are walking dogs. <laughs> these dogs clean kennels as they walk. They're walking dogs cleaning kennels. So you have to separate items in a list. 
such as walking dogs, comma, cleaning kennels, comma, hand feeding newborn kittens, comma, and supporting the pet adoption process. All of these are actions, right? Oh, nice, dude, that's good to hear, Lang Lang. Chill. Drop a like then, That's that'd be sweet if you could drop a like if I helped you get into specialized high school, that'd be chill. Um, cool, so yeah, that's exactly why, because we're dealing with a list here, right? Righteous, 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 righteous. Okay, Let's see if they have any other comma questions here. My pinky scroll. Let's go to test B. Let's see if they have any comma questions there. I'm sure they do. All right. Oh, this is a good one. This is a really good one. Okay, so what they, what is considered a run-on? Bros, does any can anybody give me the definition really quick of what a run-on sentence is? Nice, thanks, Lang. What high school did you get into? Yeah, uh, Lang, what did you get into? You get into uh, Brooklyn Tech. Very nice. Congratulations, man. Fake sentence, yes. A run-on sentence is not necessarily just a fake sentence. So what is the definition of a run-on sentence? Because I'm sure your teachers have been like, oh, don't, don't do a run-on sentence. Oh, I didn't, uh, I wasn't in New York City when I was in high school, so no comma, no period. Maybe, uh, so let me, let me check. Yeah, I wasn't in, uh, New York when I was in high school, so I just didn't, you know, I didn't go to a specialized high school, I just graduated college. Um, so let's talk about this, like, I eat bread, it is so good. Okay. So, what do you guys think about this sentence? Needs a comma. Bad. Needs a comma. Okay. So, one thing I want to talk to you guys about, you need a comma after bread. So, one thing I want to talk to you guys about is what I talked to you about earlier. And whenever you're dealing with punctuation, you got to break up the sentence structure. Is it independent? Is it dependent? Is it just a phrase? And if we have an independent and an independent, we have to use a comma fanboy. So if we take this sentence, I eat bread, that's independent. It is so good, that's independent. And we throw a comma right in here, this, ladies and germs, is what a run on is. Yeah, Chen, you need to throw a fanboy in there for it to be correct, right? I eat bread. I'll show you in a second. And it is so good. All right, so Chadi, check this out. I eat bread. That is a full independent sentence. It is so good. Yeah, that's independent. And remember, if you're gonna just throw a comma, you can only do that between dependent and independent. Or another example of this would just be like between like just an opening word and independent, right? You could just say, honestly, I sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, test prep. Uh, dudes, if you haven't already, and I have a lot of resources available for you guys. Uh, there's an online uh, practice test that I just built and put together, and it's free. You guys can go ahead and take it, uh, and it will give you a score projection on what your score will be uh, instantly. So it's really sick. I spent a lot of time working on it, and I hope you guys can get some use out of it for sure. Oh, you took it? Yeah, that's right, man. Thanks for thanks for taking it, man. It's It's a tough one, but hopefully it's good. Love it, dude. Gotta love it. I love the love, Shotty. Love it. Okay, so that's what the that's what a run-on sentence is. So actually, the correct way to write these is, as Chen pointed out, you gotta add a comma fanboy. There's three ways. Let me show you. I eat bread. Period. It is so good. And can anybody tell me the third way? This is this is for 35 bonus points. Um, and each bonus points is worth 10 bitcoins. So basically, I'm going to make you a millionaire, uh, or at least, a th yeah, Chen, drop your Bitcoin wallet, dude. I'm going to make you rich. 
you eat bread, or I eat bread, semicolon, it is so good. Bank. All of these are perfecto, dude. These are all al dente, like great sentences. Ethereum's better. <laughs> got a true, got a true trader here. We got a trader trying to get me to buy coins, man. That's funny. Separate sentences. Yes, Chati. A semicolon is literally the same thing as a period. <laughs> yeah. So if you're using a semicolon, it's the same thing as a period. Thanks, Lang. That, that's nice of you to say. I, I work pretty hard on this. It, uh, appreciate the feedback. So let's look at the sentence in the uh, practice test and let's see what's going on here. Which sentence should be corrected? Thanks, Chadi. You're doing great too. Which sentence can be corrected to revise to correct the run-on? You just learned how to do run-ons. So let's, uh, let's put it to work, guys. All right, we got two answers in here. We got A in sentence one. Take your time, finish it up. Let's see what we all think. Sentence one, everybody's on A. Yeah, exactly. So see how easy this grammar stuff is if you just understand what, the, what to look for? This stuff is, yeah, exactly. You guys are like robots reading so fast. Okay, cool. So that's how run-on sentences work, and that's something they test. Again, this is from the uh, handbook, Lang. Yep, exactly. The answer is A. So let's break down the sentence structure now that all the answers are in. It's September 2016. This is just like an opening prepositional phrase. The National Museum of African American History and Culture, that's the noun of the sentence. This whole thing is one noun of the sentence, opened. So this is a noun that does a verb. This is an independent sentence. As part of the Smithsonian Institute, that's like an introductory phrase, just like in September was. The museum, the noun, is. That's the verb. Already the Smithsonian's third most popular site. So we have two full sentences here, and they're separated by this measly comma. That is why this is wrong. If you were to put a and after this comma, you'd be looking really nice. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. Um, okay, let's do some more comma stuff now that we're on the wagon, bros. Yeah, you do gotta you do gotta read quick, that is for sure. Chen is in on F. At least, yeah. So Chen is in on F. Anybody else? Anybody else? Got any hot takes on this one? Only accepting hot takes. G, no, H. So we have F, we got H. We got another, what else we got going on? We got another F. And Beerus, are you still alive? Still alive, dude. Potentially not. Potentially he's exploded. So let's let's move on. Oh, hey. So we got F and H, just got back. The Colosseum in Rome, Italy, you can surrep, oh, that's family. Uh, you can, you can su separate them for a comma, right? Which is considered one of seven wonders of the world, right? Comma. Is the largest amphitheater ever built? Okay, so let's look at H, built. Is the largest amphitheater ever built? Comma. So you're surrounding it by commas, right? Oh man, I'm just getting blown up on text. Hold up. Let me, let me turn this on too. Do not disturb so I don't get like crazy text while you guys are doing this. Okay, cool. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is one of the largest amphitheaters ever built? Is the main verb, this is the largest amphitheater, is really the main part of the sentence that they're describing of Col the Colosseum. And so, yeah, it is 
uh, it, what do you guys say it was? F? Yeah. Because then when you put a comma after this, that makes this a non-essential modifier, right? This is actually not a run-on sentence, believe it or not. Because here's our noun, the Colosseum in Rome, Italy. This, which is considered one of the seven wonders of the world, is a modifier that modifies what we think about this Colosseum, right? Oh, if you put a come after built. Uh, no, because and could hold more. There's no noun here. This is not a sentence. So that wouldn't be a run-on. Run-ons are when you have a full sentence and a full sentence on the other side of the comma. So yeah, to make this a non-essential modifier, it needs a comma before it. And that's why you guys correctly identified that it is F. Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> uh, paragraph. Okay, let's see if you guys can find the inappropriate shift in verbs. All right, we got C. What else we got here? It should be past tense. Okay. Yep, C. Absolutely. So, guys, do you remember the technique that I had talked about? When you see that they're talking about verb tense, what you gotta do is then go through the passage and find out what verb tense they're using the most often, right? Exactly, it's supposed to be studied, past tense. Lovely, lovely. Okay, let's keep cruising. Uh, have you guys seen these before? The most precise revision ones? These are kind of interesting. Ten things it's B, okay. You're on B too? And OA45 is on B as well. Well, you guys are all correct. These are kind of easy, right? It's just like maybe C. Ooh. <laughs> okay. So let's look at the difference. What's up, Brittany? Uh, let's look at the difference in one of your vids question like this was on there. That's exactly it, dude. My EL, my vids cover the, everything on the test, bro. So why is B better than C? Why is foam and fiberglass more precise than saying two new materials? Why would you put that? more precise yeah <laughs> yeah but well, can you describe what that means you don't know what the two materials are oa45 coming in with the knowledge that's exactly it because new materials but they're already saying they're hoping to find more effective insulation so we don't really need to specify that they're new and materials are the same thing as saying it's a little bit more specific than things but not really this uh foam and fiberglass describes what they are you know what i mean Ready? Let's keep cruising, cruising, cruising. Uh, any other? Oh yeah, there's a couple more over here. Let me just go back. Yeah, so I'm gonna be doing these live streams, I think every Thursday. So if you guys wanna tune in to uh, study, it's free, free tutoring, I guess. Let me see here. Okay. All right, here's another precise language one. What time? Uh, what time is it now? It's uh, seven o'clock, so probably be sometime between six and s probably starting at around six and then going for like an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, man, so come on back, come on back. This is, this is high level tutoring, man. I'm telling you, I know this test better than most tutors in the city. Uh, during a nightly news segment about a cooking contest, a reporter talked to some people who did the best. Uh, Chen, coming in saying it's D. All right, what else do we got here, guys? Oh, wait, 45. He agrees. Chadi agrees. 
Yeah, exactly, dudes. This one was kind of a layup, but these questions are kind of a layup. You just have to make sure that you're really specifying what they're trying to go for here without changing the meaning. That's a big one. Okay. Uh, verb tense, you guys are great at those. Have we done this one yet? Oh, yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Done this one. We did that one. Agile. Yeah, dudes. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that's, a, that's pretty much the ELA, uh, the new ELA section. And then you get into like where you have to read these paragraphs and then answer questions and that's kind of hard to display on the screen. Same thing with this, you'll like have to read, oh there's another editing one. You have to like do a reading comprehension, read all this stuff and then answer the questions that are attached to it. I'll definitely be doing a lot more reading comprehension stuff in the future. But for now, I think that's all, that's all we're gonna be able to do. Uh, do you guys have any questions about math? That's some fighting words, also D, yeah. Do you have any packets that you can print out? Are you like looking at an online textbook? So Brittany, I am looking at, what am I looking at? Well, let me tell you, dude. I am looking at the 2017-2018 Specialized High School Student Handbook. This is what the city releases, Department of Education releases every year. It is the closest thing to them telling us what is on the test. So, you know, make sure that whoever you're working with knows this handbook. Because if they don't, then they're just guessing on what's on the test. Or they're just being told what's on the test. It's much better to go to the source yourself. All of my videos are not based on a tutoring company telling me what to say. I go into the handbook and I pull the material out. So this is from the city. You know, this is what the city is saying you got to do uh, when you do it. Uh, and now I feel stupid about an SP test book. It's not the same handbook. Dude, don't feel stupid. Uh, which textbook did you buy? And this handbook is free, so you can go online and find this handbook, right? Can I do 8th grade SHSAT practice material packs for the ninth grade SHSAT? Well, Chen, we talked about it, um, that it's the same material in the ELA section, but you have to get a lot harder. I would look at an SAT book to practice your ELA. And for math, uh, the, the Kaplan SHSAT prep New York. So that's an okay book. It's an okay book. Um, I would definitely recommend you watch my channel because my channel obviously will have all the information you need. Uh, and uh, Brittany, if you haven't already, I have a practice test that is online that you can take. Um, and so go ahead and take it. And if you get a perfect score on it, I give you free tutoring. So really go for it. Uh, so let's look at some of this math stuff. Does any of this stuff specifically like, have you guys seen problems like this? This is a really hard problem, by the way. I never saw your face. Oh, well, I, I did a, uh, I have one of my videos. I, I was on a, walking around a park, and so I didn't have my uh, tripod with me. 580, so 580 total, so that's 230 and 230. Wow, those are high scores, man. I, those are... Oh, those are high scores. I wonder what you what that translates to. Hold up, let me look that up. 45. Okay. So he thinks it's 45. Let's see what else we got here. Let's see, Chen. What'd you get, dude? Okay, so there's still room to grow, Ten. There's still room to grow. Where's the link? Um you can go to uh, my website right here. Let me write it down really quick. TylerTutor.com. Bang. Uh, so you can go there and you can sign up to take the test. And uh, it's, all, it's all good, man. And if you get a perfect score, you get free tutoring. If not, you get like a, a discount because you, you, know, you took the test and you're working hard and I appreciate it. Got it, Brittany, good luck. So, Chen thinks 45. 51, you have no clue. <laughs> okay, we're, we're, I, mean, I wanna show you how to do it. I'll, I'll definitely show you how to do it. Let's see here. 51, okay. So, I'm gonna show you guys. I got 290 on the math, 290 on the ELA. Those are good scores. That isn't the, hot, that isn't the top score. Uh, that's a very solid score. Very, very solid score, though. 
what if you fail the SHSAT? Yeah, no, you can take it in the ninth grade, Brittany. That's actually what Chen's doing. So let's look at this problem really quick via via the uh, pieces of paper. Okay. Okay. So we know that 20 students have cats. 23 have dags. Good luck, man. Good luck, man. Three students have both. Five students have neither. You retook the math and got a 320. Very nice. Uh, I, I, that, you got a 320? Are you sure? Can you double check that? Um, normally we don't, normally, uh, oh, just like on a practice test? I thought you meant my test. Yeah. So how do we do this, right? So 20 people have cats, 23 have dogs. Five have both. So that means three of these cat people have a dog. So really, it's 17 only cats. And it's three of these people have, have, have a cat. So really, it's 20 that are only dogs. Cool. So bang and bang. How many students were surveyed? Yeah, exactly. That's the question. So if 17 only have cats, yeah, exactly. 20 only have dogs. We know three have both, and we know five have neither. We can just add them all up. This is 20, this is 25. That's our answer, 45. You guys have any questions about that one? I thought that was a really hard one. I don't know if, maybe it's just because it's not a normal math, math question, it's more of a logic question. I don't know. I don't know, bro. Okay, so this one I actually, here, let me, let me, let me, let me show you how you can kind of be a little bit more clever than the test here. Um, there's a specific problem I want to look at. Just troll all of this. Could we do the parallelogram question? Oh, yeah, 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 we can do that. Don't. Most definitely, dude. Um, so you're talking about this one, OA45, right, bro? This one? Yeah. Okay, so how do we do this bad boy? Um, let me let me give myself some room here so I can I can write on a piece of paper about it. Okay. So here we go. So we got this shape here. Let me just draw it and then I'll get rid of this paper. Oh, this is such a bad drawing of it. Forgive me. Alternate exterior. Yeah, you're on the right track, dude. You're on the right track. Okay, so here is our problem. Beautifully drawn, by the way. Yes, that is correct. I did that by hand. I did not use a ruler for that. So be impressed. This is a two, by the way. That's a horrible looking two. Oh my God. That's a two, just for reference. Uh, so how do we do this one, right? So we know that it's a parallelogram. So I'm gonna extend the lines here because we know these lines are all parallel to each other. Right? So if this is 72, my question is, what is this right in here? Well, the entire thing, you missed SHSAT tutoring. No! So the entire thing here is 170, or I'm sorry, the is 180, right? So exactly, Chen. This chunk right in here is 108. That is right, exactly OA45. That's exactly what's up. So we get 108 here. So this is 108, this is 108, this is 108, right? Because they're just, we're just dealing with parallel lines, right? And then alternatively, this would be 108, this would be 108, right? It all works. This would be 72, right? So then we also know that Q would be 108, right? And we know that this right here would be 72, right? So we know that all of this needs to add up to what? 365, right? 
or just 360, I'm thinking calendar. So X plus 72 plus 108 plus 90 needs to equal that magic number of 360. Because remember, whenever you have a bunch of angles, right, if you can draw a circle around them, that means all of the angles need to add up to 360 because a wheel is 360 degrees, right? So that's when they all meet at the middle. So adding these up, of course they have it equal 100 because the SHSAT is crazy this year. So that's 110, 180 plus 90, so that'd be plus 270. Can somebody check my math? Am I doing this right? Minus 270, minus 270, x equals, that's 30, plus 60, 90? Oh, I drew the diagram wrong. X is all of this. So it would be, yeah, I drew the diagram wrong. That X is all of it. So it would be 90 plus 72. Uh, so whatever that answer is, 90 plus 72, 160, 162. So Chen and OA5, drop and dime on this one. Very, very nice. That is exactly it, my man. And congrats, OA and 5, for uh, getting the answer correct on the one that you had a question on. Good job, man. Good, that's good stuff. Okay. All righty, dude. So it looks as though my live stream is dead, is dying. Can you, can you guys?